Tuesday, GIS News Hour for Tuesday, 12th March. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson Cornwall. In the headlines, Grenada said to be ahead of the OECS with the work of national training agencies. More than 800 persons arrested last year for drug related offenses, and the youth arm of the Grenada Public Service soon to be established. Details are next. St. George's Bible Holiness Church Youth Arm presents a soul-searching and exciting drama production entitled The Power of the Resurrection, featuring some of the best hidden talents of Grenada. Come be a part of this amazing experience on Thursday, March 28th at the Grenada Trade Center. Starting time, 6.30 p.m. Adults, $10. Children, $5. 12 and under free. Tickets available at Alley's Fashion Downtown St. George's opposite the Bruce Street Mall, D Sports Shop on Upper St. John Street, St. George's, or call 414. 5311 or 420-0581. Refreshments will be on sale. Don't, don't miss this life-changing experience. Date again, March 28th, Grenada Trade Center, 6.30 p.m. Come see the power, power, power of the resurrection. Grenada Postal Corporation, in collaboration with the UPU and the Ministry of Education, cordially invites all students of the nation aged 15 years and under to participate in the 2013 Letter Writing Competition. The theme for this year is Why Water is Precious. First prize $1,000, second prize $500, and third prize $300. Plus, the winning school gets challenge trophy they keep if the school clinches the title for two consecutive years. Students participate and strive to develop your creative abilities. Just remember, deadline is March 22nd. Entries must be typed. Competition guidelines are available at all schools island-wide. Back viewers. Grenada is said to be taking the lead among members of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States who are setting up national training agencies or NTAs. This was pointed out at the start of a two-day CARICOM Education for Employment Program, Gender and Technical and Vocational Education Working Group at the Grenadian Birex Resort. Details in this report. The CARICOM Education for Employment Program is a $20 million program sponsored by the Canadian International Development Agency, CEDA, and implemented by the Association of Canadian Community Colleges. It is designed to contribute to an increased competitive, productive, and gender-equitable workforce in the CARICOM region by supporting the development of enhanced, demand-driven TVET and workforce certification systems. The meeting at the Grenadian Birex Resort has identified three components, equality of access, opportunities, and outcomes. Gender and TVET representative Dr. Linda Cook says they are trying to shift the perception of technical and vocational education and training while ensuring they reach the disadvantaged youth in the region. She says they are working with the Association of Caribbean Tertiary Institutes as a primary partner. Next week, I believe some uh, folks from the Ministry of Education in St. Vincent are going to come and uh, do a study visit to the Grenada NTA to learn uh, how they manage with small resources in a small island country to put in place all of the quality assurance requirements to award the CVQ and Grenada was reviewed by a CANT accreditation committee um, back in October I believe it was and met all of the requirements and are just awaiting uh, COSAT approvals. The program design identifies a number of key gender results, and the two-day meeting is expected to develop some of the tools required to assist TVET delivery agencies in implementing policies that are designed to promote success for both men and women in traditional and non-traditional vocational fields. In her address, Social Development Minister, the Honorable Delma Thomas, said the Grenada government envisions a just, inclusive, and caring society. She says they will support any initiative that provides opportunities for both men and women in technical and vocational education. As a direct response to improve the gender relations in our beautiful country, government has taken the bold step 
to embark on the development of a national agenda policy to ensure that strategic direction is given to gender. As a matter of fact, the Domestic Violence Unit in the Ministry of Social Development, Housing and Community Development has been recently renamed the Gender-Based Violence Unit to indicate that a wider range of services will be offered to address both domestic and sexual violence. Already in Grenada, we are beginning to make inroads in addressing issues of gender and technical vocational education. We have institutions such as the New Life Organization, New Law, TA Marishaw Community College, TAMCC, and the National Training Agency, NTA, etc., all trying to address the subject at hand. We know there are challenges, but with perseverance, we can eventually succeed. According to Dr. Linda Cook, Gender and TVET representative, there are three main goals of the program, one of which is strengthening the regional coordination of quality assurance for demand-driven gender and environment-sensitive TVET training. We have been working with our uh, partnership agency, the Caribbean Association of National Training Agencies, to um, do a Caribbean-wide consultation to develop a new regional TVET strategy which has now been forwarded to CARICOM for review and approval there after consultations in 12 countries and then another round of consultations with more stakeholders, including the group that we've gathered here today as our Gender and TVET Working Group. We have been working with national training agencies uh, across the region um, and supporting cross-training between the agencies uh, to assist each of the countries not yet accredited toward the Caribbean vocational qualification to put in place the quality assurance systems that they require to do so. So that's our first goal. Our second goal is increased employment, including self-employment, of male and female TVET graduates and certified workers, including those from disadvantaged groups. So again, we've highlighted gender and, of course, both genders uh, and, and the need for opportunity access and outcomes is forefront in our mind indeed. In that regard, in the past year, we have been working with our partner, Kanta, again, on um, how to introduce some of the certification for technical vocational education and training programs into the partnership programs with uh, colleges. So um, we've been working on partnerships between Canadian colleges and Caribbean institutes that would include the whole range of activities from developing an occupational standard with input from employers right through to awarding perhaps both an associate degree and a Caribbean vocational qualification. Director of Social Development Mrs. Veronica Charles says while women are making serious strides in advancement in the country, their main concern remains boys and men. It is to formalize the operating guidelines of the CARICOM Education for Employment gender and TVET technical group to review accomplishments and challenges of the program in the first year of operations to fine-tune the strategy for achieving gender equitable policies and program approaches in this program to review gender analytical tools for college partnerships and to suggest approaches to policy formulation to support gender in the CARICOM Education for Employment program. I therefore challenge everyone in attendance here today to maintain an open mind and to also be receptive regarding the information discussed here today. Participants come from host country Grenada, Guyana, Suriname, Jamaica, St. Lucia, Belize, Barbados and Canada. More than 800 persons were arrested and charged for drug-related offences last year. The figures were released by Grendon on Tuesday. It says of that number, there were 769 males and 50 females, and 800 of those arrested were Grenadians. The report also reveals that 52 persons were sentenced to prison for drug-related offences, of which 51 were males. 13 of them were 40 years and older, while 6 were between the ages of 15 to 19. 
363 patients were admitted to the Rat Dune Psychiatric Unit for problems associated with drug consumption, while 168 were admitted to the General Hospital. The report also states that 16 persons, males only, were deported to Grenada for criminal offences. There will soon be the establishment of a youth arm of the Grenada Public Service. A two-day workshop ended on Tuesday at the Public Workers' Union Conference Room, where young officers were given the tools necessary to set up the outfit. It was facilitated by Sandra Messiah of the Public Services International. Ralph Thomas of the Customs and Excise Department is confident that the lessons taught will aid in achieving the goal of a youth arm. At this is the initiation stage for the youth arm. We here have to elect members. We have to elect who will be vice chair, secretary, or so or so um, um so ever. We also well she is going back tonight. So we basically are on our own to what all the expertise of her. So whatever she taught us today, we hopefully will use it in the execution of a fully functioning youth arm board, hopefully in within six months. Claudine Alexander of the Grenada Postal Corporation says the cadre of young people chosen to drive the process forward is well able and competent to do so. With a lot of different ideas and now that they know that 75 percent of the public workers are young people, I think it gives them a drive to move forward with the youth arm. The Ministry of Education, along with its partners, are embarking on a policy-driven initiative that will make education more accessible and affordable, in some instances free, for the people of Grenada. On Tuesday, a two-day national policy workshop to develop a country policy position on the use of open education resources, or OER, began at the Alamanda Beach Resort in Montrouge. It's being organized by the Commonwealth of Learning Organization and UNESCO. Open Education Resources, or OER, relates to any educational material in public domain that can be accessed for use. And the Commonwealth of Learning Organization and UNESCO wants this to be guided properly through the appropriate policies. Tuesday's workshop is a follow-up to a regional workshop held in Jamaica last November, which was as a result of the Paris Declaration on OER of 2012. This declaration challenged governments and agencies worldwide to take concrete steps to make open education resources a key part of their policy and practice. Commonwealth official Mark Bullen says it will be an intense two days of deliberations. So this workshop is really the next step in that process, the, the Jamaica workshop was, uh, we brought together regional um, players from the region, the Car Caribbean region, to talk about some of the policy issues to sort of initiate the process of, of, uh, of dialogue around open educational resources. This workshop is the first of several uh, national events that we're organizing, which are intended to, to sort of take it to the next step and actually start to actually draft policies around open educational resources. Um, the workshop is going to be quite intensive. We have two days. Um, and uh, as you'll hear in a minute, the, uh, the, uh, the goals for the workshop are pretty ambitious. So there's going to be a, quite a lot of work to do in those two days. Um, but we think it's going to be very useful and, and productive. Information and communication technology will ultimately play a critical role in this entire process. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development, Eunice Sandy David, says government has a vision of merging ICT and education. Our present government envisages ICT as a vehicle geared to create a sustainable knowledge-based society that maximizes the use of information and communication technology for greater competitiveness, economic development, and improved quality of life and work for all of our people. It anticipates a continuation of the education reform process by incorporating ICT as an integral aspect of the teaching and learning process. It sees a national ICT program which mainstreams ICT into the entire curriculum from pre-primary to tertiary education, including adult learning programs. It goes on to see that the vision is that of Grenada becoming the technological incubator for ICT development